Hey yo, today I'm gonna go through the checklist you wanna be going through when you're trying to replicate your game. The first thing is, you know, making sure that the variable replicates is checked on the actor that you're gonna be replicating. This is the this is really easy to um, forget about, and it can save you a lot of headache if you remember it every time you go to touch an actor and you know that you're going to be doing some replicating. So to show this, I've made a um, very non-generic, crappy interact system. Now you can tell that on the server, it is changing color. This cube is changing color, but it's not changing on the client. Hmm. I've got the code there, so it should replicate. Now that is when you should be thinking, yeah, I need to check the replication settings and make sure it is set to replicate. Now I can try again. And it does indeed replicate. And for the client, it replicates, no, for the server to client, it replicates back. For the next one, I want to just say that you need to be making sure that if a client is going to be moving, that you tick replicates movement, because otherwise you'll be getting instances where, you know, that you think, why isn't this character moving? I've done everything I should have done. Like it really should be working, but the client is just moving on their own accord and their character is not updating. You need to go into your first person character or whatever character you have and make sure you have replicate movement selected. It should be done by default, but if you're using, like you made a custom pawn and you made that from scratch a character, then this might not be um, checked by default. So make sure it is. So up next is spawning in an actor. This needs to be a authoritative process. Now, to demonstrate this, I've got, um, every time I press E, it spawns in one of these cubes. And this is showing up for the client. If I try and do it on the client, it won't come up. Why is that? Let's investigate. So let's go onto the player controller, and this is where I am spawning a spawn actor. Let's ignore everything else. So all we need to pay attention to is, when I press E, it spawns an actor on the out hit location. Okay, so we've got this uh, variable spawn letting us know if it actually uh, spawns. So a good start to be a good start for trying to decide how is this broken is to press, and you can see that it is actually indeed spawning, but only for the client. Now, how would I go about making this work on the server? Well, I'd start by probably setting this to a server RPC. And I'd prefix it with an S to let everyone know that it is a server RPC. Then I'll try again, see if it works. Okay, that time it did work. As you can see, it spawned on the server and on the client. And it's interactable. So all I needed to do there was in this case in the player controller was just to set it to a server RPC. As you saw earlier, the uh, replicate movement works really well with the character movement component. And that brings me on to my next point. Always use the character movement component where you can. And there is other movement components like the pawn movement component. Um, did I spell that right? Yeah, so float and pawn movement component. Um, these are built with replication in mind. So you basically use the in the um the built-in input system with these components and replication will work nine out of ten times. Depends on what you're trying to do and if you're involved in physics. This example is about you know increment and a variable and doing so on the network and how to use print strings effectively when, when trying to debug. So Every time I have a problem with networking, I always whip out the print string because you can see what um, um, if, if, if it's a client or a server. And that's all you really need to know a lot of the time um, when you're trying to debug networking in Unreal. So if I press 1, you can see that the number's been incremented on the client. And if I press 1 on the server, it increments on the server. So they're not synced up. And for uh, in, in most instances instances over the network for certain variables you want them to be synced up so the way you would do that is you would make this a server call prefix it with a s and you would make this variable 
replicated. That's pretty much what you would need to do because then each variable is going to be adding to the same. Each um, instance of uh, a player will be adding to the same variable. So here we go. Oh, what do you know? I'm wrong. That didn't work. Let's investigate. Why isn't that working? So does that actually, I know why this isn't working. Because this variable is on the first person character and not a shared variable like inside of the game state where you should actually um, put data that you want to share to each client. So if I actually wanted this to replicate, which I can do now, um, is that I would put it into the game state. I'd put this function into the game state instead of on a player. I hope that's very clear. So if I load up a player here, uh, the game state here, and I just grab this, slap it in here, and create variable. Uh, in the game state, everything is in an authoritative state, so you don't need to run things on the server, nor do you need to replicate variables. So all I would do now is get the game state, and increment the number example, which is what I named it. So now, all players, not that button, all players, okay, still not working, it's still not working. And that is because it needs to be run on the server. Okay, and everyone should be on the same page. Do I have to set the variable to replicate? Let's see. No, I didn't. Okay, there we go. So the increment in the same variable now, both of them. And that is because instead of keeping the data on this character, which is um, owned by the player controller that's using it, um, and having the data replicated inside of here, I've actually put it inside of a RPC call to the game state. So this makes sure that each player is um, coming at the variable as a server and each player can then retrieve this information and print this uh, information to their machine. So normally if it's a call and you need it to happen on the server and it's coming out there, it's happening on the client, that's a very big, a big indicator that something is going wrong and you need to do some sort of RPC or you need to do a uh, switch has authority and make sure it's running on the authority or you can do if and you can do has has authority and these if you run them off the true will always happen only on the server and normally if you do want stuff to only happen on the server it's a choice of doing it like this or doing a um uh rpc that is executes on the server only uh, this point is more so in C++, but any action that the ser that your player is taking needs to be done on the server. Not only for replicating purposes, but this is how you prevent cheating in Unreal. In C++, there is an extra code that goes through uh, called validate. And if that returns false, the game will crash or stop working or just close down. That's because... In these validate calls, you can validate whether the data surrounding that action, um, the, the numbers are correct and they're not out of out of line. Because if, say, a, a person got into the data files and somehow set the movement speed to the character to 10,000, you could check on uh, when you press the W key if the movement is actually, uh, the movement speed is actually the sensible correct number. And that's how you catch cheats in Unreal. If you're interested in hearing more about that, you want a, um, a lesson on that, then uh, just put it down in the comments below. But I, I hope today was helpful, guys, honestly. Um, I tried, uh, you know, making some uh, interesting uh, little uh, interact system here, which kind of works, but for some reason hangs around on the screen. But hey-ho. 
Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good day.